Uh, I think that uh, Reader Nikolai must greatly dislike me because uh, he asked me to do this almost impossible task, which was to say a few words about relationships and about dating. Well, hmm. I am a man who has been married happily for 43 years, so I'm a little out of practice with dating, I'm afraid. Um, and uh, I, I would rather uh, rename it, and I'll touch upon that a little later. I want to first explore what it means to be a human being and strive to become as God wants us to be. I want us to discuss, well, to look at holiness as a natural state of being and not something alien to our being. And how we can achieve this by putting aside self-deception, deceit, pretense and delusion and embrace honesty about ourselves. Once we have properly established who we are as individuals, then we may be more ready to develop balanced friendships and possibly move on to something that I prefer to call courtship rather than dating. I hope to explore a little as to what Christian friendship looks like and what it feels like, and then to explore a little about courtship and finally to look at the martyric purpose of marriage in a secular world. So to help us a little, what does it mean to be an Orthodox Christian individual in today's world? I found an old pamphlet which I have had for many years. It was published in Jordanville in 1985. It's actually a talk by Metropolitan then uh, Archbishop Lavros to a youth conference exactly like this. Um, and he tells his young listeners, the situation of an Orthodox person, an Orthodox Christian, who lives in the world, may be described without exaggeration as extremely difficult. Being a true Orthodox Christian, prepared to preserve unto death one's faith in Christ our Saviour, is much more difficult in our days than it was in the first centuries of Christianity. Metropolitan Lavras could, have speak, be, could be speaking exactly to us in this time, in 2023, and the world seems even more complex than it was even then in 1985. To help us further in our quest for what it means to be a faithful Orthodox Christian, I turned to the writings of a great Serbian saint and theologian of the previous century, Father Justin Popovic. He was greatly influenced by pre-revolutionary Russian thought. He drew upon Russian literature, especially Gogol and Dostoevsky. He drew upon Russian philosophers and theologians, Komyakov and Solofiev, and great spiritual teachers like St. Tikhon of Zadonsk, St. Philaret of Moscow, St. Theophan the Recluse, and St. John of Kronstadt. These are profound words of St. Justin Popovich. What are Christians? Christians are Christ-bearers, and by virtue of this, bearers and possessors of eternal life. Who is a Christian? A Christian is a person who lives by Christ and in Christ. The sign of a Christian, then, is the rejection of self-deception and the honest living of an authentic life in Christ. Christians need to strive for holiness 
and to live according to the precepts of the gospel of Christ. And thus, St. Justin says, life, according to the gospel, a holy life, a divine life, that is the natural and the normal life for Christians. There is only total authenticity and integrity, and such a life is the norm for a Christian. In the first letter of Peter, we hear this, As the Holy One who has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of life. When we as Christians are knocked off course by the allurements and the temptations of secularism, of nihilism, of humanism, we should strive to return to union with the God-man. St. Paul instructs us, I can do all things in Christ, for Christ Jesus strengtheneth me. St. Justin seeks to reassure us. When God became man, the divine life became human life. Divine power became human power. Divine truth became human truth. Divine righteousness became human righteousness. And everything which is God's became man. Now how can such a thing, such an effort, be sustained? The God-man is the bread of life. He came down to feed us with eternal truth, eternal divine goodness, eternal divine righteousness, eternal divine love, and eternal divine life. And he gives us this through Holy Communion, through living the one true God and Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a high calling of every individual, a vocation. It is this, it is in the life of the Church, a life of grace, a means whereby the vocation of each one of us can be achieved. We should do our best to realise our high calling by contemplating what our Saviour, the God-man, did for us. Now these words are from St. Tikhon of Zadonsk. The Son of God humbled himself for you, so how could you be proud? The Son of God took the form of a servant for you. So how can you lord it over others? The Son of God became poor for you. So how can you chase after riches? The Son of God accepted dishonour for you. So how can you strive after glory? The Son of God had nowhere to lay his head for you. So how can you seek luxury? The Son of God washed the disciples' feet for you. So how can you be ashamed to serve your brethren? These astonishing words of St. Tikhon are in the ninth chapter of his little book, little pamphlet, about called The Dignity of a Christian. So this is what an individual is called to. This is our vocation. This is what we are called as individuals to be. Each individual is called individually to manifest the glory of God to the world. And this is our natural and normal state. Our quest for holiness is constantly upset and it's constantly derailed by the impact of the world. All those influences on social media, all those role models that we find in advertising, all these things, they squeeze out from us the desire for holiness. 
and they make us chase after illusory things. Christian friends provide Christian friendship. And they provide fellowship. They give us walking companions on our difficult way. These companions are indeed the corporate body of Christ upon this earth. The struggle is shared. Isolation and despair are overcome. Metropolitan Larus speaks of this again. If our Saviour's path in this earthly life was a struggle, a podvik, so will our lives be if we are on the way. St Paul says, let no man deceive you with vain words. Walk as children of the light. He addresses us in the plural. We, together, are on this path, in this struggle. It is a mutual struggle and we are mutually strengthened by our Christian friendship and our Christian fellowship. Human beings are created by God to be beautiful, to be lovely, to be generous, loving, shining with his presence. Human beings in their highest callings are not seekers of arbitrary, meaningless pleasure divorced from its true purpose. We see the mutual struggle of friends, true friends. You only need to read the lives of the 40 martyrs of Sebasti. They all perished together on a frozen lake. The lives of St. Barbara and St. Juliana, we've just had that on Sunday. Friends who perished together. St. Perpetua, St. Felicity. Friends perished together. The astonishing friendship and loyalty of St. Elizabeth and St. Barbara. The lives of St. Joseph of Petrograd and his great friend St. Cyril of Kazan as they were shot together in Alma Mater. These lives of friendship, intense, incredible friendship, ended in mutual sacrifice and in martyrdom. But they are a true witness to the world of Christian friendship. This high calling, manifesting the glory of God, which is what this fellowship, what this friendship is about, is indeed most difficult. St. Basil tells us that we are the only part of God's creation that can both bless and curse. We can be a blessing for the world, or if we fail, we can be a curse for the world. Our society now has become highly sexualized. The pleasure of sexual activity has been elevated to great heights. It is distinctly now divorced from its true purpose and its true setting. It is now something else. Some today would say that sexual activity and expression is a right, something to be able to do, any kind of sexual act. This and that sexual act is absolutely essential to human existence. But this is a terrible, terrible delusion. St. Paul calls this pornaya, fornication. We need to call it what it is. And what it does is the exact opposite of what the world thinks it is doing. It does not enhance human beings, it degrades human beings. Through pornography, modesty is overthrown and true gentleness is destroyed. Tenderness is undermined and all manner of violence, degradation and humiliation are manifested, polluting the human mind and consciousness and it's so accessible <coughs> and it's so dangerous 
because it depicts a totally unchristian and totally unacceptable norm. Not the norm that has been taught to us by St. Justin Popovich, that the quest for the holiness is the norm for human life. The opposite. So, social media, the internet, enable this pollution to even infiltrate our thinking, our way of life. Some secularists even call this something to do with love. It has nothing to do with love. Nothing at all. We need to shun it and remove ourselves from it as best we can. Some say it has something to do with freedom. It has nothing to do with freedom. It has to do with enslavement to that which is sinful and that which is wrong. As individuals, we can try to shun this. But how much better when we can walk together, together as children of the light, in Christian companionship and Christian friendship, supporting each other in what is in reality an elemental struggle. It is a struggle for humanity itself. The shared struggle does enable the individual burden to be lessened. And it is a heroic struggle involving martyrdom. We look towards different role models, not those promoted by the agents of secularism, humanism, nihilism, but the angels of God and the saints of God. Our role models and our fellow companions on the path of life are the saints. These should be our educators and these should be our guides. When we are in our icon corners, when we are in our churches, let us look into the eyes of the saints. Let us model ourselves upon their ways. Let us corporately study their lives. Let us journey together to their holy sites and let us learn from them. Their martyric struggle is so often an expression of friendship. All those saints that we remembered just now, the 40 martyrs of Sebasti, they all perished together as friends in Christ. These role models show us the very depth of true Christian friendship. What we do on a conference like this or a gathering like this is to cement such friendship, both upon earth and with our friends in heaven. Over time, perhaps, we can even dare to begin to see in each other's eyes the very light of faith and love which brightens the eyes of our saintly companions. That through mutual struggle we grow at last into the high calling of restored humanity spoken of by St. Justin Popovich. What then is marriage? Just recently I've married a few young people and I am struck by the contents of our services of marriage. Marriage is an icon manifesting the glory of God to the world. It is a martyric icon. It is an offering in total love of one human being to another human being a joint walking together as children of the light. If you know anything about the preparation of icons, you will know that the finest materials are chosen. Careful planning goes in, prayer is used, and canonical types are studied before any icon is even started. Well, if marriage is an icon to manifest the glory of God to the world. It needs this most careful preparation. Here is what I believe, that dating comes in. 
It is a gathering of materials for a godly purpose. This is why I would far prefer to call it courtship. Dating is just meeting other people. Courtship is something different. It should be respectful and modest, a process that takes great care. It preserves each human person's innocence, learning what it means to cherish and treasure the life of another person. Sexual union is not part of this process. Sexual union is a later part of this journey together. It is not a beginning as it appears to be in some people's thought today. Sexual union is a fruit of mutual sanctified love which brings joy and is ultimately an expression of self-giving tenderness, gentleness and love. The joy of sexual union is something to do with reaching the high calling that we are called to be as human beings. It has something to do with becoming truly human. Sexual pleasure divorced from this, its godly context, is a poor shadow of what we have just spoken of. The so-called sexual pleasure of pornaya, of pornography, is meaningless, it's degrading, it is self-seeking and it is ultimately destructive. Courtship, the careful preparation of an icon clearly set apart to manifest a different Christian way of living to the world, is a search on a path to light. The nurturing of each other as soulmates, fellow strugglers, just as the church is a refuge, an oasis of living water, a source of salvation, so is a Christian marriage. Courtship is crucial, seeking, finding this mutual companion that to go on this mutual journey together. And when this courtship bears fruit into Christian marriage, it is a wonderful and astonishing thing. Christian people, yes, even young people, should behave like true human beings, filled with love, filled with life. This means that we behave with modesty, with gentleness and with a sense of service. The chastity which we develop during a careful courtship actually continues on into married life. The restraint that we learn in courtship this is something which needs to be practiced throughout our lives and enables two people to live beautifully together. Courtship, which should be respectful of each other, helps us to learn this restraint, helps us to learn how to be gentle with each other, enables us to learn true tenderness. This is an old-fashioned way of looking at two people, perhaps. There's nothing wrong with something that's old-fashioned. There's nothing wrong that, is no, that it is no longer fashionable in the world to do these things. Once upon a time, courtship was uncomplicated by sexual activity or lust. Now it has been confused. Now it has been ruined and we need to recapture it as Christian people. We need to recapture the beauty of a courtship because that courtship prepares the way, if you like, it's the precious materials which go in to what can become a beautiful icon to manifest the glory of God to the world. We need to be doing our best to overcome the pressures of this world. And so mutually, a married couple 
we are trying to start a mutual journey towards holiness. Dating, it may be the start of something. It is a meeting. As soon as it is confused with lust, as soon as it is confused with sexual activity, then it kind of is ruined straight away. We need to avoid this as best as possible at all times. Why? Because it diminishes what we are as human beings. And we need to treasure what it is to be a human being, to be a Christian. Marriage is an icon of divine love. Each one of us should be an icon of divine love. Each one of us, whether we are married, whether we are single, whether we are hoping for a partner in our lives, whether we are a monk, whatever we are, it is our calling to manifest the glory of God in the world. It is a lonely task and a hard task. It is a task which we are nevertheless called to. It is a vocation. We are called to manifest the glory of God in the world. I just want to conclude with some words of St. Justin. Who are the Christians? Christians are those through whom the holy divine human life of Christ is continued from generation to generation until the end of the world, to the end of time. And they make up one body, the body of Christ, the Church. They are sharers of the body of Christ and they are members of one another. The streams of immortal life began to flow and still flow unceasingly from the Lord Jesus Christ and through him Christians flow into eternal life. Christians are the gospel of Christ continued throughout all the race of men. That's you and that's me. That's what we're called to do. And that is our primary calling, no matter what state of life we find ourselves in, it is our primary calling to manifest the love, the gentleness and the kindness of our Saviour. May God bless us and keep us, that the light of his countenance shine upon us and be merciful unto us. Amen. Of course. I hope I haven't bored you to death.